Islam, Peace, Nihao, Ola, Jambo, Amrami Salam El, Grand Sheik of the Moor Science Temple of America, International Asiatic Moorish Hip Hop Temple Number 23, coming out of Oakland, California, the Republic of the Northwest of Mexico. And this is Moors Jewels Uncovered, where we dig into books, texts, scriptures, articles, and we find the truth that is hidden within the pages. This episode is featuring The Dogs of God, Columbus, the Inquisition, and the Defeat of the Moors by James Reston Jr., Spandu Mystery by Peter Moon, and last but not least, the autobiography of El Haj Malik El Shabazz, also known as Malcolm X, as told to Alex Haley. <clears throat> First, we're going to start with the Dogs of God. We're actually going to start off with some images that are entitled Scenes from the Inquisition, courtesy of the Library of Congress. This is one of a man that is uh, strapped to it looks like a table and hung hung over it upside down with his his head in a bucket with some masked men standing around him and then this here is of a man strapped to a table uh, with a bucket underneath the table and two masked men holding a bucket over his head and it struck me as very very similar to images of waterboarding Thought maybe that's a coincidence, huh? But let's read the prologue. It reads, It has been suggested that the three most important years in American history are 1492, 1776, and 1865. Of these, 1492 goes far beyond American history. It is pivotal as well in Spanish history, in Jewish and Arab history, and in world and church history. Indeed, it is difficult to imagine another single year in the past millennium when so many significant strands of history came together and so changed the world in one swoop. The completion of the 500-year movement to conquer the Moors, the end of the 800-year reign of the glorious culture of Islamic Spain, the consolidation of the modern Spanish state, the sinister ex explosion of the Spanish Inquisition, the Spanish Renaissance in art and literature, the expulsion of the Jews, the discovery of the New World, and the subsequent division of the world between Spanish and Portuguese spheres of influence. 1492 is a year that can aptly be called apocalyptic, both in the original meaning of the word, as revelation or disclosure, and in its more modern usage of colossal calamity. There are so many important forces of history converged at one time inevitably begs the question, whether the hand of God was at work in the confluence. To the Christians, the Arabs, and the Jews of the late 15th century alike, there was no doubt. Such great and terrible things do not happen simultaneously at random. Providence had to be involved, and the major players were merely God's instruments, either for glory or for, dis or for disaster. Once again, Dogs of God, James Reston Jr. Amazing information. <clears throat> now we're going to flip over to Spandu Mystery by Peter Moon. <clears throat> and I'm going to be reading from Chapter 9, which is entitled El Morocco. Page 62 it reads The Moor then pointed to an Oriental man who was wearing a rainbow-colored cap, which made him stand out amongst the others. He was also wearing a white saffron robe. Crowley looked up at the Tibetan as if he recognized him. He gestured to Rose, and the entire party made their way to the, to the table of the Moors' entourage. Although not a word was spoken, this was a very special gathering of a brotherhood that traced its roots back to the ancient mag magi of antiquity. They were a sacred brotherhood of wisdom that reached across continents. On this morning, they had gathered to celebrate the initiation of young Timothy Drew, 
a man who was just about to begin his education in the Brotherhood. Just days before, the Moor, at the direction of his brethren, had taken a blindfolded Timothy to the king's chamber, whereupon he was either to find his way out or perish. It was an ancient rite of initiation into adeptship, but it was not offered to just anyone. Timothy Drew was a man of special abilities who had found his way from America to the delta of the Nile. From there, it did not take him long to get to Cairo. When he finally arrived, the brethren was already waiting for him. In fact, he was expected, not because he had sent a letter or, or was summoned by normal human means, but because it was foreseen. Now that he had passed his initi initial test of initiation, he would undergo a 10-year training program before returning to America to teach that land the truth of its ancient heritage and what had been forgotten. Now this book is packed full of jewels. Um, I mean, you just really got to pick it up, you know, to, to, to really feel and understand what's being, what's being uh, communicated in this book. Span, Span Do Mystery, Peter Moon, amazing, amazing. Much love to the brother. <clears throat> and closing it out with the, the autobiography of El Haj Malik El Shabazz, also known as Malcolm X. And I'm reading from uh, the chapter 1965 on page 382. <clears throat> and it reads Every free moment I could find, I did a lot of talking to key people who I, whom I knew around Harlem, and I made a lot of speeches, saying, True Islam taught me that it takes all of the religious, political, economic, psychological, and racial, racial ingredients or characteristics to make the human family and the human society complete. Since I learned the truth in Mecca, my dearest friends have come to include all kinds some Christians, Jews, Buddhists, Hindus, agnostics, and even atheists. I have friends who are called capitalists, socialists, and communists. Some of my friends are moderates, conservatives, extremists. Some are even Uncle Toms. My friends today are black, brown, red, yellow, and white. I said to Harlem Street audiences, that only when mankind would submit to the one God who created all, only then would mankind even approach the peace of which so much talk could be heard, but towards which so little action was seen. Let me read one of these lines over again. Let me read this over again. I said to Harlem Street audiences that, the o that only when mankind would submit to the one God who created all, only then would mankind even approach the peace of which so much talk could be heard, but towards which so little action was seen. Very powerful. Very powerful. I'm going to read a little bit more. Because this ties into to, to the closing out part. 